Okay, so who out there has an imagination? Everyone. Okay, everyone, close your eyes. Imagine a world where you are diagnosed with a terminal illness. But you live to see your great grandkids go to college. Now let's imagine living 40 dreary years with a club foot. But on your 50th birthday, you're a professional ballet dancer. Now open your eyes. That world is here, and it's yours. is akin to a seamless jump into a brand new body, circumventing the extensive recovery period of invasive cosmetic surgery. I can attest to the seamlessness of this experience, not only as the head of the Center for Advanced Health and Living, but also a very satisfied test subject. Make me the younger candidate. I'm sorry? The procedure you're launching. Use it on me. Put me into a younger body. You don't want this. We haven't had any civilian test subjects yet. This might be a bigger sacrifice than you imagine. When it's not like you're a consciousness in a jar that we're dumping into another jar. The technology is not there yet. What's the reality then? And here with us now is co-founder of the Stringfield Theory, professor of theoretical physics at the City College and City University of New York, Dr. Michio Kaku. He's the author of The Future of the Mind, The Scientific Quest to Understand, Enhance, and Empower the Mind. Doctor, it's great to have you here. It's amazing to think, and as we see in that film, Her, and the question that Samantha, played by Scarlett Johansson, posing, is this real or programming? That type of scenario we're not that far off from, and that's what you explore with this book. Explain to us where we are in the understanding of the brain. Well, Hollywood gets it first, right? But remember the movie The Matrix, when you push yes. a button and become a karate master? Or Total Recall with Arnold Schwarzenegger, where her memories are simply put into mind? We're on the border now, the brink, the threshold of initiating all these wondrous things. Think about it. Telepathy, reading minds, telekinesis, moving objects with, with the mind, uploading memories, even photographing a dream. These are things that are being done in the laboratory today, not tomorrow. Uploading memories, even photographing a dream. Uploading memories, even photographing a dream. Hi, this is Nicholson 1968. I hope you're enjoying my new project, Can You Hear Me Now? Um, what you're seeing on the screen is my old website post before I started really doing videos that much. Um, and then I moved to Nicholson1968.com. Um, the reason I'm doing this video, Can You Hear Me Now, is there were things back then I was, I was telling people, showing people, and they were like, man, I don't know where this guy's coming from. Um, what are you talking about? They didn't understand it. Uh, transhumanism, moving your consciousness into another vessel, cloning, 3D printing, um, all of this technology that separately doesn't seem that important. Um, or, well, it does, but put together, you've got a recipe that is just disastrous of what's going to come in the future. For you out there that don't believe in religion, uh, Jesus Christ, um, you know, I didn't either when I first started. I didn't believe. I don't. I didn't even want to believe any of the things that I was shown. Um, so, pay attention to the end of the, the video. I promise it'll be worth your time because the enemy is against humanity. Humanity. This is not a Catholic thing. This is not an Islam thing. This is not a Christian thing. It's not a woman man thing. It's not a black white thing. Um, this is a humanity. What we're battling is something that is way, way deeper than that. So with this 
with this video, I'm going to show you some things, break some stuff down on some videos for you, um, on a music video. Also, show you some things in the scientific community, things that are out there, things that the elite are going to try to attempt to do. They're not going to pull it off, um, so don't fear it. Um, you just need to know about it. You need to be watching and you need to be awake. And that's the reason you're probably watching this video. It is no accident. Um, if you don't understand it, that is fully, that is okay. Um, everybody is at different levels of awareness and truth, whatever you want to say. But the reason I was making this, can you hear me now, is for those exactly, I've had many people that were watching five, six, seven years ago, and they came back and they're like, man, <laughs> You know, because I've always said this for people who've been following me for a while. To understand and get from A to D, you have to understand B and C. So, and what I mean by that is, if you've never heard of transhumanism, you can't get to D right now. You've got to understand B and C. You've got to study what transhumanism is, what it's about. And also, those out there that want to study the New World Order, they want to study Illuminati, or research, not study, but... They want to believe in all these conspiracy theories, but then, like, they say, I get this all the time. Well, Nicholson, why don't you do a documentary and a video, but, you know, leave scripture out of it and leave Christ out of it, and then it'll be a good video. No, you're missing the point. You cannot understand what the enemy is up to with without that, for me. If you want to go see somebody else's stuff that shows you half of the truth, you go watch uh, Mark Dice, uh, Alex Jones, um, whatever. You go watch them. For me, I'm telling you the one game, and that's what it's going to be about, and it's always been about. Um, I do some other things on the side here and there, whatever, break it down for you, but um, ultimately it is about the one game. It is the battle for your soul. It is the battle for the next step when you leave this this physical art. What's the next step? That's what it's all about. There's no other game in town. You may believe there's another game in town, but it's not. That is the one game. So anyway, you can leave comments on that if you want. Thumbs down, whatever. I I'm just trying to tell you the truth. I'm not a shield. I'm not getting paid to do this. Uh, I wish I was getting paid to do this, but uh, I'm not. Uh, I'm just sharing truth with you. I don't have all of the answers. Uh, I'm learning just like everybody else. That's the way God works. He reveals things over time, uh, in, in His time. And that's why prophecy, it puts in motion. Um, that's why, you know, I don't have all the answers. Um, things are revealed when they need to be revealed to the people that need to be revealed. So you can either think I'm a false prophet, or you can think that I'm being poured into to tell you this message. I'm one of the other, so you need to figure that out. And uh, I'm just telling you right now, Jesus Christ is the only way to, to get to the next level, uh, period. Uh, I studied it all. Allah, New Age, Buddha, nothing else makes sense of what's going on in this world is come as a man, die as a man, showed you the way how to get out of this and take it to the next level. And I'm gonna show you in movies and I'm going to show you in what I'm going to show you in this video of why the elite and are, are pushing so hard to pre-program you to doubt exactly what I've been shown and what I'm showing you. So without any further ado, here is the video. I hope you like it and appreciate you. Our brains are remarkable, miraculous even, but they can't do everything unless we give them a little high-tech help. When children see the movie The Matrix and they see Neo jacking an electrode and all of a sudden becoming a gung fu master, the first question they ask is, how can I get one? Well, this does not yet exist, but it's actually physically possible. The key to transforming learning from an organic process to a machine-like downloading of information is a squiggly bit of brain known as the hippocampus. The hippocampus is the gateway to memories. 
Short-term memories are stored right here in the prefrontal cortex, but eventually they have to be transferred to long-term memories, and that's where the hippocampus comes in. This part of the brain doesn't store the memories, but it does the appropriate conversion. At the University of Southern California, bioengineer Ted Berger has already proven that a computer chip can replace or enhance brain function. Right now, what our prosthesis does is to convert a code that's kind of in the middle of the hippocampus to what would be the output of the hippocampus. They've been able to take mice and access the electrical signals coursing through the hippocampus and record them. And then when they shot the message back into the hippocampus, the mouse remembered the task. We found that we can not only restore long-term memories, we can enhance the animal's ability to remember. You could think about using devices like this to greatly enhance human memory and to shorten the cycle for learning in terms of uh, downloading huge quantities of memory at a single time. Chips that augment our hippocampus could very well help us learn faster. So will that make them a must-have for competitive parents? At that point, it could create an arms race in elementary school. Rumors go out that, well, Jones's kid, he's been enhanced, and our Johnny has to compete with this enhanced kid. The reality is that with these kinds of technologies, they do not get distributed to everyone at the same time. Some people get it first, some people get it better. As a society, we have to really think long and hard about who gets this. If it's just the wealthy, that there are uh, real dangers that they will use it to consolidate their power and their wealth.
Android DNA by HTC. It's not an upgrade to your phone, it's an upgrade to yourself. This can save me. I need the new bodies, remember? No. It can't save you, Chappie. The problem is much greater than your battery. We don't know what consciousness is. So we cannot move it. Chappie can feel it. I can know what it is, and then I can move me. You can't move it, I'm sorry. Okay, so let's talk about how, how we're going to do the simulations on the Earth. Okay, let me convince, this is part of going back to convince you that we're going to have realistic simulations and we're going to have, have artificial reality to go with it. Okay, so can we take a real brain and make it into a virtual mind? And the answer is, so here's the purple real brain and the neurons behind it is this neural net. It's the original neural net as far as we were concerned. And then on the left, yeah, your left, um, there is the beginnings of mapping of a brain so that I can take and map that brain and just place it into a computer. Right? So how, how's that going to work? Okay? The answer is it's going to work just fine because we are there to the point where we can do it now. Okay? And 45 minutes, that's how long you have to hold a person's head still in order to make a map to this level. And what you can see here are the main... Let's see if the laser pointer works. Nope. So what you can see here are the main highways in your brain. Right, that are mapped out by this, and this is this is basically an MRI. The, the 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 thing that's impressive about this is that the that the MRIs are getting so good now, you can map to the individual neuron metal, level. The problem is there's a lot of neurons, so you'd have to hold a head still for a long time, and that's an advance in the ability to do the mapping, and also in the software for doing that mapping. And so that's where we are today. If we can hold the person still long enough, if we can find a volunteer that we can put, you know, the little plastic thing on their head to hold their head still for some days. He's gonna get me new bodies, and he's gonna get new bodies, and I just have to get this out. I have to get my consciousness out. That's it. That's me. That's where we are today. If we can hold the person still long enough, if we can find a volunteer that we can put, you know, the little plastic thing on their head to hold their head still for some days, right, which is a little bit of a problem, we could probably go ahead and map their, map their entire brain and then just transform that map into a computer model. And we would have that person's mind downloaded into a computer. Okay. So this is coming, and this is coming soon, just like it's now possible for on the order of a thousand pounds to get your DNA mapped, it's going to cost you something in, 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 about th in about 30 years, it's going to be possible to download your brain into a computer for about a thousand pounds, right? Plus inflation. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know how, you know, could, could go up, could go down, right? But th there's tremendous advances in technology and these are making it possible to do things that before we thought. So I have a quote from a Google expert. We'll be uploading entire minds to computers in 2045. He also says, we'll do bodies too. I'm thinking we won't do bodies. What we'll do is we'll take that mind and keep it from going out of its mind. We'll put it in artificial reality, right? It's in the computer, it's going to get bored. Wants entertainment, wants social interactions and so forth. So we're going to create artificial realities. Now in the old days, we'd make a thing like that, if you remember the matrix, right? Ones and zeros, now in fact we may use quantum computers, so we'll have entangled states. But in fact, it'll be some kind of a complicated environment where we can interact socially, because people want to be social, so there'll have to be thousands of people to interact with, and there'll have to be all kinds of other things in order to make that artificial environment sort of realistic and keep you going. And remember, when you download your brain, you're going to think about a million times faster. You're going to experience life about a million times faster. It's going to be a very different kind of a, of a situation. You know, the idea of going back in machines and going out in the real world where things are so slow, that's you know, you're going to get tired of doing that. It's just a temporary body, mommy. I'll make you a new one. You don't have to go to the next place. <laughs>